Thank you very much, Sheila, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, delighted to uh, welcome you to this webinar dedicated to bias in measurement of this of the outcome that uh, I will present with uh, as John Rob Jackson. First, I would like to start by the outline of our presentations. I will first do a very short introduction related to the overall risk of bias tool. Then I will present some uh, of the bias mechanisms linked to this domain and empirical evidence. And I will tackle more specifically uh, some of the signaling questions related to this domain, to so signaling questions one and two. And then I will uh, give it over to Asdron Rob Jackson, who will tackle uh, all the issues related to blinding with the signaling questions related to three to five, and we will end up with questions. So first, uh, some reminder about the different domains that have, are being tackled by uh, uh, the risk of bias tool and all the domains that uh, can raise some bias. The first one is the bias arising from the randomization process. Uh, then we have the bias due to deviations from intended interventions, the bias due to missing outcome data, and today we will focus on bias related to the measurement of the outcomes. And there will be a, another webinar specifically dedicated to bias in selection of the reported results. So, Assessing the outcomes in the randomized controlled trials is really uh, a very important step. However, it can be uh, subject to errors in measurement. When we talk about errors in measuring outcome variables, we mean that the value of the outcomes that is going to be measured is different from the true value of the outcomes. So for example, you want to measure pain in a given patient, its true value of its pain level is seven on a scale from zero to 10, but the value that you're going to measure is 7.3. Just some terminology uh, to clarify some of the wording that we might use. We talk about measurement error when it's an error for a continuous outcome misclassifications for errors for dichotomous outcomes or categorial outcomes, and under or over a settlement for an event. We have two types of errors. Non-differential error, which uh, very rarely provide uh, issues related to bias, and differential uh, errors, which are going to uh, raise concern for bias. First, some explanations about the non-differential errors. Non-differential errors are errors that are going to occur similarly in both groups. These errors are just not related to the treatment allocated. So let me give you some example. You want to measure the hemoglobin level. You're going to do a blood test, but the machine is going to uh, overestimate the hemoglo hemoglobin level of uh, uh, one or two um, uh, level, but this will happen in both groups. So you will have the same uh, uh, difference in both groups. Same for the blood pressure, you're measuring blood pressure for, uh, to the patients, but uh, the uh, device that is used in the, in the trials is uh, increasing of 10 millimeter of mercury, uh, the blood pressure, but this will happen in both groups. Another example for uh, end for endpoints. So this is an example uh, that was published. It's a double-blind randomized controlled trial. So there was no impact of the knowledge of uh, uh, the treatment received, and the outcomes was a composite outcome of different events: deaths, myocardial infarctions, with or, or without refractory angina. Two ways of measuring the outcomes were used in these trials. The first way of the first method for measuring the outcomes 
were just to rely on the physician decision, how the physician coded the patient in, uh, in the electronic health record. And another way of, uh, another methods for measuring uh, the outcomes was to send all the documentations related to the patients to an adjudication committee, an endpoint committee who was also blinded, who looked at all the documentations and decided whether the patients had or did not have the outcomes. Well, you can see there are some differences between the two. For example, some myocardial infections were considered also being myocardial infections, but for some of them, the adjudication committee decided that there was no endpoint, no event. And that's part of the um, misclassification of the non-differential errors. So what are the relationship between non-differential errors and bias? Well, usually when it's a continuous outcomes and we're interested in mean difference, we consider there is no bias related to non-differential errors. For dichotomous outcomes or categorical outcomes um, reported as odd ratio, risk ratio, or hazard ratios, the, if there is a bias, the bias would mainly be a bias towards the neural, so towards showing no difference between the two groups. There are some situations where uh, the non-differential error can bias effect estimates away from the neural, so towards uh, one uh, treatment arms, but they are very unlikely to occur in randomized control trials. The most important uh, issue for randomized control trials are going to be differential errors. So these are errors that are related to the treatment allocated. So for example, you're assessing the level of pain in patients and uh, the level of pain is systematically overestimated in the control group, the, uh, underestimated in the experimental group compared to the control group. So this will be a differential error. And so this raises some issue related to bias. And to avoid this type of bias, we will rely mainly on blinding outcome assessment. Related to blinding, um, I think it's important to be aware that there are different terminologies that are being used for blinding. You can see in different publications the wording single blind, double blind, triple blind. And there has been a very nice paper published by uh, Philippe Devaux in the JAMA a while ago, where he just looked at the different definitions with, for this terminology. He asked physicians and looked at te textbooks. And he found for single by blind, we can have 10 different definitions provided by uh, physicians, five different definitions provided by textbooks. Double blind, you have 17 different definitions. So every time we have to assess the risk of bias of a published report, of a report, we shouldn't rely on this terminology, but try to see exactly who was blinded in the study. Blinding is important. Everybody tells you that blinding is important, but what is the evidence of uh, the importance of blinding? Well, actually, we have quite a lot of evidence of the importance of blinding in treatment effect estimates and the, the risk of bias. Usually, to explore bias, we rely on meta-epidemiologic studies. And I'm reporting here uh, one important meta-epidemiologic study published in Annals of Internal Medicine in 2012. And what they do, they focus on specific study characteristic and look at their impact on treatment effect estimates. So here we are focusing on binary outcomes measured as odd ratio and we're presenting the ratio of odd ratio. If the ratio of odd ratio is equal to one, it means that this characteristics has no impact on effect estimates or there's no evidence of relationship uh, of, of this uh, characteristic on treatment effect estimates. When we looked, when we compare studies that did not report double blinding or had unclear uh, double blinding compared to studies that were double blind, 
we can see that there is an overestimation of treatment effect estimates. And when we looked in a subgroup analysis at the difference between different types of outcomes, we can see that when the outcome is mortality or objective outcomes, the impact is lower than when the outcome is a subjective outcome. Another uh, very uh, interesting uh, meta-epidemiologic study was published by Adrian Robertson in the BMJ in 2012, and there has been other for other types of outcomes. This study focused only on binary outcomes. In this meta-epidemiologic study, uh, only randomized controlled trials that evaluated for the same patients in the same study uh, the outcomes in two different ways. So the patients were evaluated first by blinded outcome assessor, but also by unblinded outcome assessor. So for the same trial, we can see the treatment effect estimates if we rely on the blinded outcome assessment, or if we, lie, if we rely on the non-blinded outcome assessment. And as you can see here, so here in dark, you can see the blinded assessment, and in white, the unblinded assessment. And there is almost systematically an overestimation of treatment effect. So these are uh, good empirical evidence of the importance of blinded in uh, randomized control trials to avoid bias. However, uh, blinded, is blinded always feasible? Well, we have uh, different situations where it will be impossible uh, to, blind, uh, uh, to have blinded in the study. First, an example that I, I really like the example because this study was reported as a double blind placebo randomized controlled trial. However, after the publication of this study, which was evaluating zinc treatment for common cold, a lot of people did write some letters to the editor saying that the blinding was not credible. Indeed, when you take zinc treatment, there is a very specific taste and a very specific aftertaste of the ink. And when you interview patients, their answer is that anything tasting as bad as zinc and with as much as aftertaste as zinc must be a very good medicine. So, of course, this study was not blinded and the success of blinded was not credible at all. And even the taste of the treatment may have induced very important hunches uh, to patients. And of course, there are a lot of situations where blinding is not feasible in surgery, in rehabilitation, in several non-pharmacological treatment. We won't be able to have a blinded study. Even if it's not possible, to blind uh, patients and care provider, we can try to blind outcome assessor and to have a study where only the outcome assessment is being uh, uh, blinded. There are some different methods. For example, if your outcomes is an evaluation of a radiography, you could send all the radiography uh, anonymized to a core uh, laboratory who will Ascend, bl assess blindly all the radiography. If it's a clinical exam, you could imagine to have a video of the clinical exam. If it's an interview, you could audio tape the interview and send all the video and audio tape for a centralized ass assessment. If you're assessing scar or uh, uh, some uh, problems on the skin, you can do photography. And for clinical event, you can organize a blinded adjudication committee that will assess all the clinical um, data of the patients and decide whether the patients had or did not have the outcomes. Nevertheless, such centralized blinding might be complicated to, uh, to uh, implement in a randomized control trials. And you will have several randomized control trials where blinded won't be performed. And in some situations, for example, for patient reported outcomes, it won't be possible at all to have blinded uh, outcome measurement if patients are not blinded. 